Hey everyone, it's me, Doom Link, and welcome back to Doom Link's Random Hunts. Today we are going to be hunting a double Naga Cougar, however, I don't know if I'm actually going to be hunting two Naga Cougars here, because apparently we're supposed to leave one for Florin, and then Ken and I, two men, another one, because Florin wants to do great sword headlocking on the other Naga Cougar, so that is uh, something he's welcome to do. And we'll see if we can kill his in the time it takes the two of us to kill this Nagakuka. And that is a very, very well-timed Sonic Bomb, if I do say so myself. Straight in there with a the Sonic Bomb. That's what I like to see. Ken is opting for Fire, which is not the primary weakness. But it's still pretty damaging, so I'm cool with that. Alrighty. So, one thing that I have to say is that... It seems that Ken is the host and he doesn't have great connection to me, but I don't think he is a phone user, so we should be okay. It's not going to be absolutely terrible. We're not going to have disconnects or anything like that. Long story short. But yeah, for those who are not aware, this is indeed Nagakuga's first game appearance. You will notice that he moves a lot more fluidly as compared to other monsters of this game for the reason that he is a brand new monster to this game. Most monsters that do appear in Freedom Unite are from previous games. And they are totally unchanged, I can assure you that much. The only thing that changes slightly are things like hitboxes, but in terms of animations, and for the most part, in terms of AI, they are unchanged. But you can see that this is a more polished hunt, although the connection might not suggest that. The reason why I'm randomly stopping in place, I've mentioned this previously, is because my analog stick is actually shit, so... Yeah, do forgive that. But, um... Yeah, the two monsters that you really notice being fairly well designed are Nagakuga and Hypno. Because they're just... they're more modern than the other monsters you find in this game, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. And it is noticeable. Also, the hitboxes are fair with Nagakuga, whereas hitboxes with other monsters are not quite so fair. You do have a huge hitbox on the Tail Slam, but that exists in not just second generation, but in all of the other games that Nagakuga appears in, as far as I'm aware. I cannot speak for World. Never fought him in World. I barely even recognize him to be a World monster. But uh, I don't know what you're pinging for, Ken. You seem to... Maybe it was an accidental ping. I guess that's possible. I'm just sort of hanging back here because I'm a little bit concerned about the connection, and I'm also concerned about my controller barely functioning. I really do need to stop complaining about it and just get a new one. Or open this up and fix it. I don't know. What do you want, Ken? You want something in particular? No, doesn't seem like it. Just a bit worried if he's going to be pinging me and I'm not paying attention to what he wants. Maybe he has some kind of requirement. I might try to cut that tail, but it might not be worth it. You see, <laughs> I would have rolled through that had my analog stick registered the fact that I was trying to move, but it did not, so that was really helpful. Again, that's me trying to reposition and my character deciding that he doesn't want to move, so... I'll try not to talk about it, but if you do see my character move rather strangely, that's why. So I'm doing the... I don't even know what it's called. The only attack that I know the name of is Demon Dance for Dual Blades. The swinging maneuver that I just did there is probably the easy one to do without getting hit. You don't have to commit as much, in other words. Had a little issue there with movement again. Oh, that is very, very good timing, again, with these Sonic Bombs. I'm too lazy to bring things like Sonic Bombs for Naga Cougar Hunts, but it is very useful. That much can be said for sure. I'm using a set that has high grade earplugs just because I do like the freedom to continue attacking during a monster roar. It really keeps your momentum up in a hunt. Pretty much the only time where I don't use high grade earplugs is, is if I have a very specialized weapon set, or if I'm going up against a monster that does not have a roar that can flinch you. Fairly sensible, I would say. There's not much point bringing high blade... high blade? <laughs> high grade ear plugs to a hunt that does not have a monster that's going to flinch you with a roar. It would be a little bit of a waste of a skill. But yeah, you can see that Nagakuga has pretty lacking health when it is a double quest. We will go and say hello to the Nagakuga that Florin is hunting. I don't know how he's been doing with headlocks, but apparently it's quite difficult to do with Nagakuga, but possible. That's my understanding of it. And Florin is one of those people who plays Freedom Unite that plays it a lot, not casually like I do. 
the people who play it very frequently are, well, few and far between, but they do exist. In this community they are kind of common, I suppose, but in terms of percentage of people playing Monster Hunter, in general, very, very tiny percentage. Okay. I don't know... Ooh, this one is considerably larger, if you can tell. He's a really beefy one. This might be a, a gold crown large, in fact. Because Naga Cougar isn't a very large monster, typically, so... If he's this frickin' big, I'd say this might be a candidate for gold crown large. Definitely silver crown at the very least. I would be utterly shocked if it were not at least silver crown. But I'm banking on a gold crown for this one. Definitely with dual blades in this game, it is common that I will not be in demonized mode because it, it is such a thing to commit to. Oh, I was hoping for a roar there. <laughs> Beautiful timing. That is so good. So good to see. Very refreshing after my last Rajan hunt at the end of the previous video, as you guys may have seen. Because that hunt was basically... The entire hunt was bereft of strategy, let me tell you that, but... Lots of strategy going on here. You can see that was a beautiful level 3 charge to the head on the turnaround with Naga Kuga. Just delightful to see. One thing that is few and far between, or rather something that is difficult to find in Hunstiverse, is strategy. But there is more of it in Freedom Unite as compared to Portable 3rd, that much I will say. You can see I'm getting stuck in one place because my analog stick is barely working. It definitely is affecting my play. I'm just trying not to focus too much on it, commentary-wise. I mean, you guys can probably see where it's affecting my gameplay, if you are paying attention. But, uh, yeah. It's very strange because the PS4 controller that I have here, I've only had for two years, and it started acting up about a year and a half into my ownership of it. So, I've got no idea what the deal with that is. I have PS3 controllers that feel cheaper, but have worked consistently for a period of, like, six years without fault. After abusing them, I have been very gentle with this PS4 controller and it's already messed up. It's bizarre to me. I don't know if that's a case of just manufacturing becoming worse over time, or if it's just really bad luck. I don't know what I want here. I don't want Scale Plus, actually. That's not very interesting to me. And in fact, Pelt Plus isn't very interesting either, because that is a higher rank draw, but, uh, or a higher rank carve, however you want to refer to that. But that was a really nice hunt. I very much enjoyed that. Of course, Florin is using the King Atalant Sword, which is the highest raw greatsword in the game. A very popular choice among greatsword users in Freedom Unite. I actually am tempted to get the Shen Galden greatsword. It is slightly less damaging. Slightly less effective than the King Atalant Sword, but it looks cooler, in my opinion. So I might actually get the Shen Galvin Greatsword at some point and use that instead of the King Atalant Sword, if only to have something a little different to what everyone else has. Because again, it is very common to see a King Atalant Sword in <laughs> a quest in Freedom Unite. Because it is just such a good weapon. Alright, I'm going to put all this away. And I will see you guys in the next hunt. Alrighty, it's a can't lose time. I'm gonna skip this because I think I've demonstrated this somewhat recently. Okay. I had to sit a little further back from my computer screen for the reason that the heads-up display is really big because it's supposed to be on a portable display. My <laughs> monitor is not a portable display. But yeah, I'm using Gunlance here, which is a little bit of a rarity for me. I'm not much of a Gunlance player at all. Obviously, as most of you are probably aware by this point. Shield that, excellent. So basically, the way in which you use Gunlance in this game is you actually continue the combo with Gunlance shots. That is the purpose for shooting a Gunlance, really, in second generation. So three hits, and then I can continue the combo just like that. That is your infinite Gunlance combo. Or at least that's how I use my shots. There's no real reason to focus on shooting except to perhaps do Wyvern Fire and things of that nature because, again, there's no charge shooting outside of things like Wyvern Fire. So I really wouldn't recommend focusing entirely on shelling unless you have a gun lance that specifically shells at a high level. I think the shelling level here is... well, what is it? It's... 
I could actually check. Shelling level 4, not too bad. The highest level is 5. Unless you have a shelling, shelling level 5 Gunlands, I certainly wouldn't recommend doing it. Now, I've been affected by Snow Blight. It is still possible to turn on the spot to remove it faster. It's just a little less effective here as compared to 3rd generation. Well, that was kind of bad timing, but... Let's see if I can get around this crack. Ugh. And go into Ukanlos' crack. Whoops, I missed my shot. It is possible to shoot up still. But yeah, the difference between shooting and evading to continue your combo is basically the difference of damage, so I would recommend shooting to continue the combo, basically. Um, my defense is not incredible for the reason that I am using the... What is it called? The Barrage Piercing is what it's called. Basically gives me Load Up, which is called Capacity Up in this game. The original translation for Earring was Piercing. And... Yeah... It was called that in 1st and 2nd generation, and then it changed to uh, Earring in 3rd generation, and it was Sword Saint and Barrage in 1st and 2nd generation as well. Ooh, what are you pinging for, Ken? Of course, I need to... Oh, I was going to say I need to continue holding my shield up because I was worried about being hit by the Snow Blight, and it still got me anyway, which is a bit silly, but anyway. Oh, Ken was hoping for a turnaround there. Didn't happen, unfortunately. Oh, we've got Yoset here. This is the guy who was constantly flashing, I think, in the last hunt. And by last hunt, I mean the Rajang hunt. That's still going to hit me, I think. No, it didn't. I was expecting to get hit by the snow blight, you know, to keep away from that freaking tail. As I've mentioned previously in my other Okanlos hunts, the tail is really the most annoying part of Okanlos in second gen. Oh, managed to get a... Health threshold there. there go, hit that tail. I'm not really desperate to cut that tail. I really don't care either way. But yes, it is possible to shoot up. You can do this. Just like that. But outside of that, you really don't have many options with shelling in this game. It is a little fun, though, because you can actually shoot endlessly just like that. If you mash circle to shoot, as of portable third and all games following, you go into auto-reloading. Whereas in this game, there is no auto-reloading. So you just keep shooting until you're out. Or you can just shield and press circle to reload manually. That's basically how it works. You can basically shoot just like this at a much higher pace. Or higher rate of fire, however you would like to say that. Yeah, that's the way old Gunlands works. It's very simple, very basic. Not as fun as modern Gunlands, but as far as, uh, well, in the context of Freedom Unite weapons, it's reasonably dynamic, I would say. Oh, I was really worried about that hitting me. I will top up my health here, just in case. I think he's going to do his charging attack. Let's be nice and careful. He's going for Yoset. I'm just calling him Yoset because I'm not calling him Yoset. That's obviously not the way that's supposed to be. Must be the first character of whatever surname he is going for there. Or perhaps he has put his real name there. Maybe his real name is Yoset. Yoset, that is. And he's got a surname starting with P. It's definitely possible. There we go. Piercing at a good angle there. Thrusting at a good angle, I don't know. Of course, I do have sharpness plus one here because you either want razor sharp or sharpness plus one with a gun lance, to be honest, just because of how shelling reduces your sharpness quite considerably. There we go. And also, pretty good motion value on that attack, the one where you advance forward. Oh, I'm bouncing. Not good. Because, of course, that leaves you quite vulnerable to anything that might come your way. Alright, let's try to get another Wyvern Fire in. Can we do it? Looks like we can. Excellent. Very good damage as well. Let's aim for that face. Actually, no, let's aim for the chest. I know I won't bounce there. There we go. It's not really a safe place to be standing just underneath him here, but anyway. Well, that actually didn't hurt. You would imagine that it would, though. Imagine being walked over by something like this. 
I'm sure you wouldn't want to be in that situation in real life. That would be less than desirable. Where are you? There you are. Going after your set again. Poor guy. But yeah, if we look at the sharpness here, pretty decent. Not bad at all, but we are having to sharpen pretty frequently. So having your whetstones on hand, quite necessary with the gun lance. Oh. Let's try to advance forward here. Well, shielding isn't even going to help me in that situation. Because I'm just going to get hit by the snow blind anyway. Sort of shooting inside his body then. Or thrusting inside his body. Put that on a shirt. I'm thrusting inside his body. There. Yeah, the way in which you use Gunlands here is so different, really, to the later games that it is a little uncomfortable to get used to it at first, but once you are used to it, you just get back into it, you know? Of course, for those who are not aware, I did start with Freedom Unite. This was my first Monster Hunter game, and I did use Gunlands fairly early on in my Monster Hunter experience. So I do have, I guess, habitual, instinctive skills to access, but you sort of have to dig for them when you play the more recent games more often than the older ones here. But the crazy thing is, what I describe as being the more recent games is now becoming traditional Monster Hunter. I mean, it's utterly shocking to me. I mean, had you told me three years ago that Generations Ultimate, or at that time, Double Cross, was going to very soon be referred to as traditional Monster Hunter, I would have fainted. But that's literally how it is. Generations Ultimate is now becoming traditional Monster Hunter. So when I say the newer games, that's what I mean. It's still traditional Monster Hunter, but it's newer than this stuff. So that's basically what I'm trying to get across. Oh, that was me trying to reload, probably at a bad time. Uh-oh. Don't you do that jump and catch me in that. That is a huge hitbox. But yeah, you will notice that Ukanlos is relatively unchanged here to that of, well, I say unchanged. He's relatively unchanged in Portable 3rd as compared to his first appearance here in Freedom Unite. The reason why is because... Ooh. Yeah, the reason why is because this is really the end of second generation. As I mentioned in the Naga Kuga hunt, most of the monsters that you see here are totally unchanged from, I guess, first generation and early second gen. And to be honest, early second gen, a lot of stuff like... Well, for instance, Monster Hunter 2, Monster Hunter 2 DOS, that is to say, feels very first-gen. Especially considering it's on the PS2 with those stupid PS2 Monster Hunter controls where you're using the analog stick to do your actions. It's very first-gen feeling. So the point is that there really wasn't much of an evolution from first to second. At least not until Freedom 2. And... Even at that point, Freedom 2 was just bringing a lot of older monsters back, plus some. And then this game did relatively the same thing. But in the case of monsters like Karnlos, Hypnok, Nagakuga, they feel a bit cleaner. Why do you keep pinging Ken? You clearly want something and I don't understand what it is. You seem to have this need to ping. I mean, unless you're doing it accidentally, that's definitely possible, but it's really throwing me off because it feels like you want something from me. I don't mind strategic pinging, but I don't understand what you want. It's a concern of mine. He was doing it last time. That was a very nice charge on the face there. Doing combo greatsword there, because he doesn't want to miss out on DPS. Keep away from that fucking tail. I have demonstrated plenty of times what the snow blight is like with that tail. I think we can get another wyvern fire in. Let's go. Excellent. And if we can get the damage out on the back legs, that would be great because that will knock him over. While it is set damage because it's true damage from the wyvern fire, it does actually still apply damage to the certain area that you have shot it at. So if you're going to shoot it anywhere, shoot it on the back legs, because that is where your trip threshold is present. Okay. Just really worried about... There we go. As I said, attacking those back legs is very useful for tripping him over. Not as good for damage, but if you attack the weak point, once he's down, then you're sort of making up for him. We've 
uh, cut off the tail. I was about to say chopped off the tail, but I don't like saying chopped off. It sounds a bit weird. Maybe not to you, but to me it does. Try to avoid that. You can see that I was not directly hit by Ukarnos there. I was instead shielding the massive tremor that was caused. Oh. Thought he was just doing a shovel attack. But he was jumping. He's a jumpy boy. Keep away from that roar. And of course, more than anything, you need to be careful. Oh, that that lingers in this game, I forgot. Again, getting stuck in place because of my stupid analog stick. It's becoming very annoying. That's good. Happy to see that. It always it feels very weird to be able to to attack three times and then reset the, how do I say, the combo by shooting. It feels like attacking three times is just too much. I believe we can still carve, yeah, that looks like we'll be able to carve just fine. I'm going to head over to the tail while I'm remembering it. I probably don't often carve the tail in this game, although I don't know if there's actually a unique carve. I would assume that there is. We've got a shell. Maybe it's just called a Carlos tail or something like that. We got two shells, no tails, sadly. For me, or sad to say. I don't know. Speak English, Doom Link, that would help. Let's go and carve you here. Maybe we'll carve a tail on the body. Who knows? My guess would be not. But yeah, fun hunt. He is the final boss of this game, by the way. For those who are not familiar. Again, I've mentioned these things before, but many people who are watching this video may not have seen my last Ukanlos hunt in Freedom Unite, so I mentioned these things again, you know. So I think we broke... what did we break on him? We didn't break the back because... oh no, we did break the back, so we broke the... the jaw, the back, I didn't see the claws, but we did cut the tail as well, so we may very well have broken everything on him, which is definitely encouraging. It means we've got a good team dynamic. That's a strong Ukanlo's fin. There we go, heavy Ukanlo's tail. It's good to see. Now, I don't know if that's a quest drop or a wound reward for breaking the tail. My guess is that it's just a quest drop. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next time.